Hello all, welcome to Paritranaya. In this class, we will be discussing about another very important topic related to history. That is the formation of Indian National Congress. So when it comes to formation of Indian National Congress, there are two different opinions. So one myth is that Indian National Congress was formed in order to help the Britishers. And another one is, so it was actually formed to attain independence or to gain freedom from the Britishers. So these topics have been divided into two parts. One is Indian National Congress, the myth and the other one is reality. So in this class, we will be discussing about the first part that is the formation of the Indian National Congress, the myth. So again, this topic is very important from both Plims as well as Main's point of view. So as and when we encounter different points, we will see which point will become important from Plims point of view and which one will become important from Main's point of view. So first we shall start with what the formation of Indian National Congress, the myth. So we all know that A.O. Hume, Alan Octavian Hume, uh, an English ICS officer played a very important role in the formation of Indian National Congress in 1885. So who is an ICS officer? Today, uh, the IAS officers, so before independence, we used to call them as ICS officers. So in a similar way, A.O. Hume was an ICS officer. So he played a very important role in the formation of Indian National Congress in 1885. Here we come across different personalities. So again, they are important. Uh, Ripon was Viceroy from 1882-84. So we already know about the concept of Viceroy. Before independence, we did not have the concept of Prime Minister in India. So before independence, the powerful position which existed in India was Viceroy. So if at all we want to make a comparison, then we can compare Viceroy to today's Prime Minister. But today's Prime Minister is elected, whereas Viceroy was not elected, rather he was appointed. Appointed by Queen of what? England or Britain. So, uh, Ripon was the, the Viceroy from 1880 to 84. Next, Dufferin was the Viceroy from 1884 to 1888. 1884 to 88. So, important. Important. Next. So, what is the myth surrounding the formation of Congress? So, the myth surrounding the Congress is that Congress was formed in order to help the Britishers, in order to help the Britishers. So how will uh, the formation of Indian National Congress help the Britishers and what is that myth surrounding? Let us see. Myth of safety wall. So here we come across a concept called as safety wall. So we all are aware of the safety wall. So generally in a pressure cooker, if there is no safety wall, let us assume uh, there is no safety wall, then what happens? The pressure will build up internally and the cooker may blast. Similarly, in India, there was a massive discontent against the British rule. So, if the people, all of them, they protested and started a mass movement against the Britishers, then probably it may lead to overthrow of the British rule. So, all of a sudden, if uh, the mass gathers against the British rule, then Britishers will soon, they have to leave India. So, in order to temper the masses, in order to cool down the masses, so they required a weapon. And that weapon was the formation of Indian National Congress. So it, Indian National Congress, it acted like a safety valve. And this is the myth surrounding the formation of Indian National Congress. That it acted as a safety valve so that uh, whatever the mass that was being generated internally, so that could be tempered. So the myth of safety valve says that it was started under the official direction, guidance and advice of Dufferin, the Viceroy. So we all know, uh, we, we have just seen that during 1885, that is for, during the formation of Congress, uh, Dufferin was the Viceroy. So the myth, myth is that based on the directions of Dufferin, A.O. Hume started Indian National Congress. Based on the direction of Dufferin, A.O. Hume started Indian National Congress. So why did they start? Because Congress, they wanted to create as a body which acted as a safety wall. Safety wall for whom? For Britishers. So to provide a safe, mild, peaceful and constitutional outlet or safety wall for the rising discontent among the masses, which was inevitably leading towards a popular and violent revolution. Supposedly, if they had not created Indian National Congress, then the rising discontent which the people of this country had against the Britishers, then that would have turned violent. And once the what revolution it becomes violent, then it would have become very difficult for the Britishers to control. That is where they are looking for a plan. And one plan that flashed was creation of Indian National Congress. So how will we uh, help Britishers? 
Now we are aware that generally when we want to control a mass or let us consider an example of a classroom. So there are, uh, let us assume there are 5 to 6 students or 7 to 8 students uh, who do not, who disobey the teachers. So what the teachers will do among those 8 students, one will be opted as a leader. So when among those 8 persons, one person become a leader, becomes a leader, automatically the other 7 students will start listening to him. So in a similar fashion, it was difficult for the Britishers to control the violent revolution that would have undertaken. But among those people, a few of them have been selected as leader and if uh, those leaders are convinced, then what the leaders will do? They will convince the masses. They will convince the masses. So this was, this was a tactic and that's why Indian National Congress was formed. So this is the myth. So now in this topic, we shall see whether the, that myth is true or whether it is false. Okay. Whether it is true or false. So consequently, the revolutionary potential was nipped in the bud. So by creating Indian National Congress, so whatever the revolutionary potential it had, it was nipped in the bud before it could blow completely. So it was nipped, okay, nipped in the bud. So very important. Now next, let us look into the various uh, different personalities who are what who believed that the theory of safety wall is true. So this point becomes important from both uh, Plims as well as Main's point of view. Probably in a Plims, they may ask you a question like this: Who among the following? Uh, personalities supported safety wall theory or they believed that safety wall theory is true. So in that context, these names are also important. Okay, these names are also important. And also when it comes to mains, if at all they pose a question like whether the safety wall theory is true or false. So in order to what enrich our answers, we need to quote the various personalities and their opinion. So the next part that we will be discussing, again it is important from both films as well as mains point of view. Mains point of view. Okay. Now when it comes to Indian National Congress, so in the forthcoming classes we will be discussing that there were two wings within Indian National Congress. So one wing was called as moderate wing and the other wing was called as extremist. Extremist wing and moderate wing. So later on we shall see what exactly were the differences in the ideologies between the extremists and moderates. But for a time being we shall assume that there were two wings within Indian National Congress. One wing was called as extremist and another wing was called as moderate. And generally when there are two wings they will be having differences of opinion. So extremists used to have a different opinion against moderates and extremists they always used to criticize moderates and moderates used to criticize extremists. So similarly when it comes to what safety wall theory extremists they believed that they believed that uh, Congress was formed as a safety wall for Britishers. So Lala Lajpat Rai, Lala Lajpat Rai who represented extremists, who represented extremists in a newspaper which was published, a young Indian newspaper or book which was published in 1916, he used the safety wall theory to attack moderates, to attack moderates in the Congress. So from this statement, what do we understand? What kind of questions can be formed in the prelims? So uh, who wrote articles for Young India? Lala Lajpat Rai. So Lala Lajpat Rai was a moderate or, or an extremist. He was an extremist. So what kind of tools did, did he use to attack moderates? So Lala Lajpat Rai uh, used the tool of safety wall to attack moderates. Okay. So all these things are important from prelims, and also the same points can be quoted in Mens as well. Okay. Mens as well. Next. R. Palme Dutt. So R. Palme Dutt, another personality. So his work was India Today. India Today. And he belonged to political ideology which leaned towards left. So when it comes to political ideologies, generally we have what in a broader sense, right, center, left. So we have created a separate video for these political ideologies in order to understand the difference between left, right and center. You can watch our previous uh, our video related to that. But here uh, we shall assume that there are three ideologies, center, right and left. So R. Palme Dutt, he uh, held an ideology of left. Okay, He had a left wing opinion. So whether he believed in safety wall, yes, he too believed his safety wall. And this safety wall theory, it became a staple uh, of left wing opinion. It means every day, whenever the left wing ideology people they are discussing, then the discussions would start with the help of safety wall. So always they used to use the safety wall theory to criticize the Congress, okay, the formation of Indian National Congress. Next, very important point to note, which uh, R. Palme that highlights. What is that? National character began to overshadow loyalist character. Overshadow loyalist character. So what does it mean? So loyalist character means there were few people who are loyal to Britishers, 
who are loyal to Britishers. So national character means, so those who are in favor of independence, those who want to fight against the Britishers, those who would wish Britishers to go out and attain freedom. So gradually the number of people who are having a loyalist character, they reduced, the number of people came down. Whereas gradually the number of people who had nationalist character, who wanted to attain freedom as soon as possible. So their numbers grew. So this line indicates that national character began to overshadow the loyalist character. Okay. So the number of people who are loyal to the Britishers, they came down. The number of uh, nationalists, they increased. Okay. As a result of formation of Indian National Congress. But still, what was the sin? The original sin of its manner of birth left a permanent mark. So what is that original sin? The original sin is that Indian National Congress was formed by Alan Octavian, whom who was a Britisher. So even though national character began to overshadow the loyalist character, but the original sin that it was started by a Britisher, so it, it left a permanent mark. Okay, It left a permanent mark on the creation of Indian National Congress. Next, here Palmer that again also highlights about the Congress's twofold character. What is a twofold character? One was it is created by government. And at the same time, it became the organizer of anti-imperialist movement. So the British government, it, it was responsible for the creation of Indian National Congress indirectly. And at the same time, the Indian National, uh, National Congress, which was created, it started fighting against the Britishers. It became anti-imperialist. Okay. So it indicates the twofold character of Congress. Congress. And further, the duality of Congress leadership extended from Gokhale to Gandhi. What does it mean? Duality of Congress. The duality of Congress here indicates on one side, they used to please please Britishers and on the other hand, they used to what, fight against the British, Britishers, they used to criticize the Britishers. And this was not confined to only few personalities. So some eminent personalities were also part of this. For example, Gokhale, Gandhi, so all of them, they maintained that duality. So sometimes they pleased uh, the, the British government and sometimes they opposed the British government. Opposed the British government. Thus, thus, Congress had become an organ of opposition to real re revolution. So as per our Palme Dutt, so the real revolution is violent revolution and Congress had become an uh, organ of opposition to this real, real revolution. Okay, real revolution. So culmination of this dual role. So this dual role, it did not end. It continued until India attained freedom uh, as part of Mountbatten settlement. So we all know that as part of Mountbatten settlement, so which took place in uh, 1947, we got finally freedom on August 15, 1947. Okay. So Mountbatten was the last viceroy of India and he was responsible for negotiating the deal with India. Okay. With India. Okay. So we saw Lal Lajpatrai, R. Palmedat. Next, M. S. Golwalkar. So M. S. Golwalkar in his pamphlet which they published V. Golwalkar. So they used the safety wall theory. So they also believed in safety wall theory and they used this theory to criticize Congress, to criticize Congress. So Congress was in favor of secularism. So MS Golwalkar in their pamphlet, they criticized uh, Congress by saying that whatever you are supporting, you are saying that secularism and secularism, your practice of secularism is nothing but it is equivalent to anti-nationalism. So as per the pamphlet that was published by M.S. Golwalkar, it indicated that Congress's support to secularism is nothing but it is tantamount to what? Anti-nationalism. Anti-nationalism. Next, further he will say, Hume, Cotton and Wedderburn founded the Congress as a safety wall to seething nationalism as the toy which would lull the awakening giant into slumber, an instrument to destroy the national consciousness. So further M.S. Golwalkar says that, uh, here we can take an example of a small kid crying, okay, or small baby which is crying. When the baby is crying, what we do? Generally, we give some uh, what uh, toys to it. So after getting hold of the toy, the baby will start playing with it and it will keep quiet. Similarly, when the national consciousness was building to its peak, so Britishers became aware of it. So if this consciousness increases, then def definitely it will burst and it will be a great threat to us. That is why Britishers they gave a toy. Okay, and that toy was in the form of Indian National Congress. So it stopped the growth of this national consciousness and that awakening giant, it, it, it entered into a slumber state. Okay, so it means Indian formation of Indian National Congress was in no way beneficial for arousing the national consciousness is the theory propagated by M.S. Golwalkar in his pamphlet P. Golwalkar. So these are the various theories that have been used to what criticize the formation of Indian National Congress. Similarly, W.C. Bonerji in his 1898 
Indian politics in Indian politics newspaper. So he mentions that. So the formation of Indian National Congress is mainly attributed to the plan of Dufferin. Okay, to the plan of Dufferin. Next, similarly, C. F. Andrews and Girija Mukherjee, they fully accepted the theory in their work, The Rise and Growth of Congress in India, published in 1938. So here, what kind of questions can be asked? They may ask you a question like, so who the work Rise and Growth of Congress in India belongs to whom? It belongs to C. F. Andrews and Girija Mukherjee. Next very important point to note here is, although all of them believed in safety wall theory, but C.F. Andrews and Girija Mukherjee, they were in fact happy with the safety wall theory. Why? Because they thought that it had helped avoid useless bloodshed. Suppose if Indian National Congress was not formed, had not been formed, then what would have happened? That mass revolution, that agitation which was building among the people, so that would have come out in a violent way. So if it had come out in violent way, probably Britishers might, or might also have resisted it. So a small war might have taken place. And as an end result of that war, there would have been bloodshed. But because of the creation of the Indian National Congress, there was no bloodshed. So it means whether it is safety wall, yes, the safety wall has helped to avoid bloodshed. So this was the theory propagated by C.P. C.F. Andrews and Girija Mukherjee. Girija Mukherjee. Next. Whether this safety wall is true or false. So first we shall see about few of the proofs. But before that we shall look into the various points. So these are the points that we have discussed. So moderates and extremists we saw uh, two wings within the Congress. And next we saw the various personalities who accepted or who believed in safety wall. So even from Plim's point of view this list will be useful. Similarly when it comes to answer writing in mains. So in our mains answer, if, we, if at all we are able to put these different names, then definitely it will add weightage to our answers and will fetch more marks. Okay, so very important point to note, very important point to note. Next, next we shall look into the various proofs to indicate that the safety wall theory is true. To indicate that safety wall theory is true. So here, <coughs> we know that Hume created Indian National Congress in 1885. But why did Hume create it? Okay. Seven volumes of secret reports which Hume claimed to have read at Shimla in the summer of 1878 and which convinced him of the existence of the seething discontent and a vast conspiracy among the lower classes to violently overthrow the British rule. So what happened? In 1878, Hume read reports. What kind of reports? Secret reports. How many volumes? Seven volumes. So what was present in the report? In the report, the information was present saying that there is a seething discontent and vast conspiracy. So people of India, especially lower class, they are unhappy with the British rule. They are unhappy with the British rule. So they were, they were agitated against the British rule. So that's why they wanted to throw the Britishers out of this country. And that's why a mass struggle was upcoming. A mass, coming, a mass struggle was upcoming. That is why when Hume got to know about this information, that a mass struggle is going to happen and if there is a violent uh, such revolution that is about to happen then definitely it will become a threat to the British rule and Britishers have to leave India and they have to go. So under, by understanding this scenario Hume created the Indian National Congress. So this is a myth. This is a myth. Next we shall see what few more proofs regarding this. So Hume got the information. So where did he read? He, re he read this re report in Shimla. Okay. In Shimla. In 1878. Next. Whether Hume himself expressed that he has read the report? No. Hume himself have never expressed. Then who expressed it? William Wedderburn. William Wedderburn expressed about it. Okay. William Wedderburn, he wrote a biography, biography of Hume. In his biography, he mentions, he mentions that uh, in uh, 1913, he published the A.O. Hume's biography. So he mentions about what the reports which Hume had read. William Wedderburn will write a biography of Hume. So in that uh, biography, he mentions that Hume had read a report, okay, secret report of seven volumes in 1878. So wherein Hume had understood about the upcoming dangers. And that is the reason why he started, uh, he was responsible for starting Indian National Congress in order to what? Suppress the national consciousness, okay? In order to create a safety wall. Next, <coughs> Lala, later Lajpat Rai. So Lala Lajpat Rai, next again when he started writing, 
So he did not verify whether whatever has been written by William Wedderburn is true or false. But in his later writings, he quoted Wedderburn's writing. So in Wedderburn has written that Hume had got such kind of information and because of that information, he created Indian National Congress. So the same information was used by what Lala Lajpat Rai and he also wrote that uh, Hume uh, created Indian National Congress because he had read secret reports in 1878. So wherein it was mentioned that a mass struggle was upcoming and in order to avoid that threat, Indian National Congress was formed. This started. Later, these seven volumes, they started undergoing metamorphosis. Okay, What is metamorphosis? So generally when a story undergoes a change, we call it as what? Metamorphosis. Or something undergoes a change, we call it as metamorphosis. So generally we witness when any scenario is being presented, it will be presented by different people in different manner. Now somewhere let us assume an accident has taken place. One person will just uh, plainly present it saying that an accident has taken place at a particular place between a big vehicle and a small car. Another person while presenting the same fact, he may present it in this fashion. So there was a big accident and the car took almost three rounds. This may be the presentation of second person. And when the same story is being presented by third person, he may present it in this fashion. So when the accident took place, almost five to six members, uh, they flew in the air. So this is how the story gets what metamorphosis from one to other. Similarly, <coughs> these seven volumes of report, they also underwent metamorphosis. So we shall look into few of the examples. What are those examples? So in 1933, Gurmukh Nihal Singh's book work. So he wrote a book. In that book, he mentions that they were government reports. Which were government reports? Initially, the Hume, the reports which he had read, secret reports, the seven volume uh, secret reports which he had read. So they became government reports in whose hand? Guru, uh, Gurmukh Nihal Singh's hand. So previously, we did not know whether the reports were uh, government reports or private reports. But Gurmukh Nihal Singh in his work, he concluded that the reports are government reports. Government reports. So this is the first kind of, first kind of metamorphosis which it uh, took place. Next, after that, Andrews and Mukherjee. <coughs> so in their work, what they did is they presented that these secret reports were from the CID, CID department. So Gurmukh Nihal Singh made them as government reports. Andrews and Mukherjee, they said that these were the secret reports from CID. Okay. Then how did Hume uh, get control of this report? Because Hume was an I ICS officer. So in his government capacity, he got those the reports from home department. So second type of what changes which it underwent. So these two examples, we can conclude that. So these seven reports, obviously, they took, uh, they underwent a metamorphosis, metamorphosis. Next, R. Palmedat. <clears throat> so we already seen that the different kind of changes uh, that have taken place with respect to the report. Now let's see here. So R. Palmedat, most influential and classical statement. He said that Hume has obtained the voluminous reports, uh, secret police reports. So Hume himself has obtained the police reports. So this was a statement made by R. Palme Dutt. Next, including the recent historians R. C. Majumdar and Tara Chand. So they all accepted the product of creative imagination. So here Bipin Chandra presents that whatever has been discussed above is a creative imagination. And in order to say that it's a creative imagination, he has presented certain proofs. So with these proofs, we can dismantle the theory of safety wall. Okay. And he also states that the famous historians like R.C. Majumdar and Tara Chand, they also believed in the safety wall theory. Okay. But in fact, this uh, theory which we have presented here, it's a product of creative imagination is the theory propagated by Bipin Chandra. So next let us see what kind of proofs that he has presented in order to dismantle that proof, this uh, dismantle that theory, the theory of safety wall, okay, safety wall. So here again, uh, these points are important, okay. So when you are presenting the main answers, you need to know about both the sides. So what are the proofs in favor of safety wall? So first is Hume's uh, what reading of the secret reports. Next, uh, it was presented in William Wedderburn's writing. Next, Lala Lajpat Rai. Gurmukh Nihal Singh's metamorphosis, how the changes took place, Andrews and Mukherjee. Similarly, R. Palme Dutt, uh, R. C. Majumdar, Tara Chand. So all they believed in the theory of safety or safety wall. Next, we shall see how this theory is wrong or what are the proofs which exist in order to indicate that the theory that we have discussed is completely wrong, completely wrong. So next, proof dismantled. Okay, let's see how this proof will be dismantled. 
Now, Hume was the secretary to the Department of Revenue, Agriculture and Commerce in 1878. So, we all know that we have different departments. Even today, we have different departments. For example, in India, totally, we have close to 50 ministries. Home Ministry, Defence Ministry, Agriculture Ministry. So, all the ministries are separate. So, generally, the file which is present in one department, it will be very difficult for the other department to access the same. But here, if you look here, Hume, he was an ICS officer. So, he worked in which department? He was a secretary of Department of Revenue, Agriculture and Commerce. Agriculture and Commerce. So, but the CID files or police reported files, the secret documents, they belong to which department? The department, they belong to Home Department. So, the question is, how did uh, a person who is a secretary of Department of Revenue, Agriculture and Commerce get access to the files which are present in the Home Department? So, this is the first proof that which can which we can use to dismantle the theory of safety wall. It means whatever the theory we have, they have created, it might be false. So, this is the first proof to dismantle the theory of safety wall. Next, if Hume had read the reports about the what upcoming struggle in 1878, why did he wait for seven years and form the Indian National Congress in 1885? If Hume had understood about the upcoming struggle which was uh, going to happen, then why did he wait for seven years? Why he did not create immediately either in what 88 or 89 or 90? Why did he wait for seven years? So this is the next question. So based on this question also we can conclude that some of the things which we have presented in favor of the safety wall might be wrong, might be wrong. So again this is the second proof to dismantle the theory of safety wall, to dismantle the theory of safety wall. Next. If Congress uh, was founded out of fear of an outbreak, why did it wait for seven years? Why did it wait for seven years? Next, another very interesting fact uh, which will help uh, us to dismantle the safety of uh, the safety wall theory. So, Wedderburn's Wedderburn's work. So, what does the Wedderburn's work? Uh, what kind of information does it give us? We already know that William Wedderburn. William Wedderburn. So, he has written the autobiography of Hume. Sorry, biography of Hume. A. O. Hume. So, in that he has mentioned about the secret reports which Hume had got. Okay, which Hume had got. So, Wedderburn's works detailed study indicates that Hume got information regarding danger towards the end of Lytton's viceroyalty. So, Lytton was again a viceroy from 1876 to 1880. Okay, 1880. So, he mentions that at the end of the Lytton's viceroyalty, probably Hume might have got the information in the year 1880. Let us assume Hume had got the information in the year 1880. So, from a special source. So, Wedderburn says that he had got the information from special source. So, who are those special so Which is a special source? The special source are religious leaders. Okay, Religious leaders, gurus who had supernatural occult powers. So, Wedderburn mentions that Wedderburn mentions that Hume had got this information about the upcoming struggle from a special source like religious leaders. So, how come he got to, uh, got to know about this information from religious leaders? Because the religious leaders or gurus who are present in India, they had occult powers. It means they could, they had special powers with the help of which we could, they could predict about the future, what could happen in the future. So, they had predicted that in the future, immediate future, there could be an struggle there could be a mass struggle from India. So, that information the Mahatmas had shared with the Hume and based upon that Hume came to a conclusion that in order to what stop this mass struggle, in order to silence this mass struggle, in order to temper this mass struggle, we require a safety wall and that is why he, he created the Indian National Congress. So, this information is present in Wider, uh, Wedderburn's writings about Hume. Okay, Hume. So, whatever we had discussed previously, so the things are changing now, the things are changing now. Because previously we read that, previously we read, we read that uh, Hume had obtained the secret reports, okay, secret reports. But here we got to know that he had not obtained the secret reports, but he had got the information from some special uh, sources like gurus and all who had occult powers. It means whatever has been presented above, it is uh, inconsistent with the next discussion that is happening. So, all these things, few of these things have started indicating that the things which have been presented in favor of safety wall, so most of them are false. Most of them are false. Next, apart from that, Blavatsky enabled Hume to get in touch with one of these Mahatmas named Kuthumlal Singh. So here, 
blavat sky so what did he do he helped how did he help blavat sky helped a meeting between hume and a what religious leader kuthum lal singh so he became as an intermediator for the meeting meeting between hume and kuthum lal singh who, who was a religious leader leader who had occult powers so kuthum lal singh he informed hume about the upcoming danger about the upcoming danger danger so here uh, where do we find this information ap sinnet he was a follower of blavat sky he was a flower, uh, follower of blavat sky so ap sinnet in his book okay in his, in his book published in 1880 had quoted a letter from kuthumi that these mahatmas had used the, their power in 1857 to control the indian masses and save the british empire and that they would do in the future so we need to understand these terms what does it mean so from ap sinnet's writing we understand from ap sinnet's uh, writing we understand that uh kuthumi okay kuthumi had used uh, in a published had quoted a letter from kuthumi so kuthumi he had written a letter he had written a letter okay he had written a letter in that letter he had indicated what he had indicated that in 1857 we know that about the first war of indian independence which took place in 1857 so whether we succeeded in first war no we did not succeed we failed so kuthumi says that why indians did not succeed because during using their occult powers using their supernatural powers so the gurus which were present in india they prevented the mass struggle from happening so it indicates that the gurus or uh, the mahatmas helped the britishers helped the britishers and apart from that he also mentions that uh, they would continue to do so in the future so in 1857 the british were uh, were saved because of the help extended by mahatmas like kuthum lal singh and apart from that they also made a promise that in the future if you are facing any such problem again we'll come to your help again we'll come to your help so all these things indicate that uh, hume got information from kuthum lal singh that an upcoming danger is coming so the what the theory propagated by the believers of safety wall was different and the things which are being revealed here they are different it means the things are inconsistent it means the idea that congress was formed as a result of a what safety wall theory is to a great extent false right? to a great extent false <clears throat> next apart from that here hume okay so what kind of uh, what mischievous things they used to do also is very clearly visible here so hume wrote to ripon hume wrote to ripon so ripon was viceroy from 1880 to 84 ripon was viceroy from 1880 to 84 so hume has written a letter to ripon in that letter hume mentions that your viceroyalty will end in 1882 84 but we want you to give you a what next uh, one more period of viceroyalty so that is why we want to force the queen to appoint you as viceroy for the second time so in order to force the queen to appoint you as what uh, viceroy for the second time we are seeking help of the mahatmas we are seeking help of the mahatmas like uh, kuthumi so who can influence the queen to appoint you as a viceroy for the second time okay for the second time so hume also wrote to ripon in 1883 about his connections with such power such super people and how he was using the same to persuade queen to extend the second term as viceroy to ripon so again these things indicate that so hume had not uh, received any kind of secret information or any report but rather it was uh, based on the information that which he had received from some mahatma okay some mahatma so all these points they are totally inconsistent with the points which we had discussed in favor of uh, what support of safety wall theory so all these things indicate that the safety wall theory is false okay safety wall theory is false next uh, in this context uh, a society has appeared theosophical society and here the associated personal personalities madam blavat sky so often upsc often focus on such kind of questions so it may give you a personality and it may ask you the associated uh, organization so it is theosophy or theosophical society theosophical society next in this context few of the organizations have appeared so 
in the book sometimes they fail to mention about the founders and all but whenever there is a lacuna of information we have to add that extra information because upsc often focuses on organization and its founders so in this chapter we come across organizations like bombay presidency association so it was formed in 1885 so we have to explore for extra information if it is absent and who are its founders kt telan and ferosha mehta similarly uh, pune sarvajanik sabha started in 1870 founded by mahadev govind ranade ganesh vasudev joshi and h chipunkar next madras mahajan sabha 1884 founded by m veer ragwa charyar g subramanya ayer and p ananda charlo similarly indian association in 1876 founded by surendranath banerji anand mohan bos and dwarkanath ganguli so we need to know about the founders and out of curiosity among these four organizations which was the organization which started first so we, it's very much obvious purva pune sarvajanik sabha so whenever we come across any information we need to have that general curiosity so this is what the upsc expects it always expects us to have a curiosity so among these organizations which one started first pune sarvajanik sabha right next so the final point to dismantle the what a uh, safety wall to dismantle safety wall theory so what is that <clears throat> so bm malabari editorial in indian spectator so in newspaper called as indian spectator he wrote an article so in that article he supported he urged the indian uh, educated indians to inaugurate a movement of social reform so bm malabari he wanted social reform he was in favor of social reform but hume who was a friend of bm malabari so he criticized he criticized him he criticized him and said that political reform should take precedence over social reforms so this indicates that hume was in favor of political reforms hume was in favor of political reforms but not in favor of but not in favor of social reforms not in favor of social reforms so one example next see dufrin so dufrin in st andrews day dinner speech he was addressing a particular gathering in 1888 so in that speech what he did is he publicly criticized the congress he publicly criticized the congress uh, for pursuing politics to serve narrow interests rather than to take social reform which could benefit millions so dufrin had a belief that social reform social reform can bring great changes okay it means he was in favor of social reform dufrin was in favor of social reform now he was not in favor of political reform he mentions for pursuing politics he was not in favor of polit pol uh, political reform but he was in favor of social reform so first we need to understand the difference between political reform and social reform let's take an example so example of political reform now let us assume only men are allowed to vote in an election or only men are allowed to contest in an election if women are not allowed and suppose if you bring some provisions wherein women are also allowed to vote women are also allowed to contest then this will become an example of political reform this will become an example of political reform now example of a social reform so let us assume abolition of sati system it's an example of social reform okay uh, child marriage if you abolish the child marriage it's an uh, example of social reform okay if you abolish the system of dowry it will become an example of social reform so in that fashion dufrin believed in social reform and uh, he said that it should be given more priority than political reform but before this we saw that hume was in favor of political reform he was not in favor of social reform he was not in favor of social reform so here what we understood hume and dufrin they have different ideologies hume is in favor of political reform and not in favor of social reform whereas dufrin he is in favor of social reform but not in favor of political reform it means there are two different ideologies and we always always know that whenever there are two different ideologies then it is different it is difficult for us to accept the opposite ideology so similar will be the case here okay so Duff, hume will not be ready to accept the directions of dufrin but what we have learnt in the beginning we learnt in the beginning that based on the direction of the dufrin hume started indian national congress as a safety wall but hume and dufrin both of them they hold a different ideology so as they hold a different ideology then definitely a case will not arise wherein wherein hume will what 
uh, obey the directions of Dufferin and act accordingly. So again, this final proof also uh, indicates that the theory of safety valve is a myth, is false, okay, is false. So if this is false, if the theory of safety valve is false, then what is truth? Okay, so what is truth? What is the reality that we will be discussing in the next class? Okay. So in this class, we discussed about the myth. Similarly, in the upcoming classes, we will be discussing about the all important topics related to UPSC. For all our further updates, subscribe to our channel and hit on the bell icon. Thank you.